um, while I was shuffling this spread out for you, what I saw was an image of, um, it's, it's like a, a flat line. Um, something is flatlining, and what I saw was um, the, the waves going up and down, and then it forms a heart, and then it, it, it dissipates. So it's sort of like flatlining, but it has a picture of a heart, and then it dissipates. So when, going back to what I mentioned last week, I feel like somebody was tapping on your shoulders, telling you, you know, look at me. Uh, I care about you. I like you. Look at me. And I feel like your back was turned towards them. And uh, I did mention last week, I believe, that um, it's really important to take stock of what you have, take stock of who's around you, and especially cherish the people that are making time in their life for you, either through communication or through physically being there or checking up on you or just, you know, making themselves available to you because I feel like I feel like you're missing something or you're missing their intentions. So you're not either understanding their intentions or you're misinterpreting their intentions. That's what I felt last week. So this week, the image of that heart is very, very appropriate because I feel like something is being stirred up within you. So just imagine, you know, um, on a monitor, it's flatlining, but then it, it forms a picture of a heart and then you get a heartbeat once again. So if life has been very mundane, if, if you feel like you're just going through the motions, you know, school, home, school, home, or work, school, home, work, school, home, and every day feels very, very monotonous, and it seems as if there isn't enough excitement or there isn't anything that can change the routine or can make you feel inspired or can make you feel like like worth living then i definitely feel like there is something coming through for this week to really reignite that sense of purpose within you that yes there's a lot to live for and i feel like it requires you thinking a lot more with your heart and once again taking stock of what's available for you to, to kind of um, jumpstart your heart or jumpstart, you know, the, the passion, the fiery passion, what you're feeling within your heart. It doesn't necessarily have to be a person, but I feel like there is a person, but it can also be hobbies, interests, and, you know, things that you're passionate about. Um, so that's the overall message that I'm getting with the, uh, the image. What I feel here is... Um, I feel like you have moved on from a situation. You're just like, I'm done. I, I, I'm moving on. And I feel like there's some information coming to light this week that makes you go back and re-examine your choices. Okay? Um, and I'm also feeling like the, the information that comes to light is very, very profound. And it's almost like a, a, a major, major turn in your life. A major switcheroo is going to happen for you. You thought it, something was done and over with. You thought you've made up your mind. You thought you finalized your decision and that the decision cannot be undone. Like you're, you're very determined. But I feel like there's news coming up that will allow you to kind of have a change of heart and revert back to that situation. Um, I feel like to resolve some things, to have a talk, to have a discussion, to get things out in the open, to clear the air, and to also have uh, an understanding from the other person's perspective. I'm also seeing some of you, um, you're looking at somebody, so like you're heavily, heavily, heavily keeping an eye out on a person. And for some of you, this could be, you know, via social media. For others, this could be asking a lot of questions. What is so-and-so up to? What are they doing? And I'm hearing specifically, you know, are they seeing anybody? Are they single? What are their interests? What do they like? What kind of foods do they like? Uh, what kind of um, hobbies are they into? What are their interests? So I see you finding out about a person. And uh, I don't see you asking a group of people. I see you being a, a very discreet and very under the radar about this. Like, um, 
You could be swinging by their desk, looking around to see what kind of uh, paraphernalia they have on their desk so that you can gauge, you know, what kind of person they are. You could be perusing through, you know, communications, text messages, pictures that you've seen of them on social media or pictures they've sent you or even um, messages that have been exchanged between the two of you to kind of figure out what kind of person they are, what are their interests and things like that. And I'm seeing somebody with really big hair. Okay, so the, the hair came up. Um, I feel like they have a wave to their hair. They have long hair. They have a wave to their hair. And there's something significant about their hair. It could be very, like very unique. It could be a different color. It could just be like a full body um, bed of hair. It's like something unique about their hair. Um, so I don't know why that came out. But there's something that really draws you towards them. I'm seeing one person might not have hair and then the other person has a lot of hair. So there's a, this sense of like liking somebody who's very different from us. Yeah, but the, the hair imagery comes out strongly. Somebody with a lot of hair, like a, a really nice bed of hair. Um, Not only are you drawn to their hair, but I almost feel like you want to reach out and touch them. And it's almost like something feels to me like it, it just feels like there's a lot of censorship. There's a lot of things that you're considering that you want to do, but you're kind of apprehensive because you're thinking, you know, will the people around me approve of this? What is it going to do to the environment? Um, it's too unexpected. It's, it's outside of my element. I don't know how to proceed with this. I don't know what people will say, what people will think, what people will, will people talk behind my back? How is this going to affect everything else that I've laid out foundationally? So I'm sensing here there are a lot of just uh, social uh, pressure where you have to behave a certain way and you're trying to buck the system. You're, you're trying to just, you know, um, do what your heart wants, but you're not able to do that just yet. You know what your heart wants. This is activating the heart chakra. He's got a little door in front of his chest and his the third eye is strategically placed right there. So this is a, a person that has been through a lot of battles, a lot of turmoil, a lot of turbulence in their own lives. And I feel like through everything that you've been through, you know, you, you didn't grow up with everything handed to you on a silver platter. You had to work for it. You had to fight your way. You had to um, rely on your intuition and also taking um, taking a safe route. And I feel like at this point, it's almost like, what do I have to show for myself? I've never been able to act out of my own sense of sheer desire. I've always been listening to what other people say of me. Okay, this came out in the reverse. I never went against the tide. I did what was socially acceptable. I did what was expected of me. I feared censorship. I didn't want to upset anybody. And at the end of the day, it's like, I'm not really living an authentic life. I want to do what is true to me and my desires and my passions and my heart. And I've been around the block enough to know what I really want. And I want to be happy at the end of the day. So screw all the other things and the people that are involved in this situation. I want to do what is good for me, what makes me feel good. So there is a little bit of um, an energy here where I feel like it's okay for you to be selfish. It's okay for you to go after these things that you want. It's okay for you to do it. If this is what your heart is really calling for and this is what really stirs your heart, this is what makes your heart skip a beat. It's okay, because I feel like your intuition is guiding you towards this route, okay? And you know, in a way, it's almost like preparing for battle. He's got a wand in his hand. He's going to go out and fight for what he wants, okay? So you are anticipating that there's going to be uh, opposition and adversaries 
that will stand in between you and what you want. But you're okay with that because uh, deep down Taurians are very, very brave. And once you have your eyes fixed on something, I feel like you're going to be able to achieve it. Um, so moving forward, um, I feel like, you know, the, the, the reading is not so much about career and finances. And when those things don't come through, I usually, you know, just say, uh, no news is good news. It's going to be fine. Okay. Financially you're, you're fine. And I feel like career wise, you guys are in a very stable place and you're, you're fine. It's just right now, it's a matter of realigning yourself with what your heart really craves and what it desires. Um, there is an offer of love coming through from another person. And I feel like somebody is, um, Somebody's your other half. Somebody's your other half. And um, you've been, you, you, I, I feel like deep down, there's this deep sense of knowing that somebody is your other half. You have inadvertently given your heart away to another person. And I feel like it happened in a very casual manner. It might have been, you know, uh, friendship built up over time. It might have been a situation where you feel the sense of connectedness. And honestly, I feel like if you've been the one that has taken the stable route, that has, you know, gone with the, the tide and you never kicked up a fuss and you never behaved in an individualistic way, the person that you're very drawn to is somebody who like doesn't care. They don't care. They're very authentically true to themselves. They do whatever they want. And in a way, you find them to be very refreshing. So there's definitely a sense of like opposites attract in this spread. And I feel like in the process of admiring them or um, you have a lot of respect for this person. You know, you, you guys might not see eye to eye on certain things, but you hold true to your beliefs. They hold true to their beliefs. No one is really bending here. And because of that, you do have a lot of respect and admiration for this person. And I feel like inadvertently, you might have given your heart away. And for whatever reason, without their presence or lack of their presence, or even um, there's an element here about time is ticking. I'm seeing two clocks here. One is on the bottom and the other one is a little wristlet that she has. It's a clock. Time is ticking. Somebody is you know, tapping you on your back again and telling you, hey, time is ticking. The clock is ticking. They might be waving goodbye. You might realize that the window of opportunity is narrowing, narrowing, narrowing. And if you have already given your heart away, you have to speed up the process. So whatever you're planning to do, I feel like you need to approach it from that heart space, okay? Um, going back to what I was, I was mentioning earlier and I got sidetracked, there is an offer of love coming through here. We have here the Knight of Cups. This is something that is, um, I almost feel like for a Taurian person, this is somebody that is uh, very likable. They could be quite charming, quite attractive. They could also be like very communicative and in a way, I feel like it's an invitation, you know, it, it's an invitation. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's, um, you know, have a good time. Let's just um, see where things go. So it, it's, it's not like somebody giving you a commitment. This is just like, let's see how well we get along. Okay, let's uh, explore this a little bit further. So it's like half friendship, half romantic. Um, it's like the intentions come in with a dose of friendship and a dose of romanticism. So I, I feel like I, I feel like there is a big foundation for friendship, mutual respect, and also um, really liking one another. Getting along really well as well. So even though you're opposite from each other, there's an element here about being able to communicate well, having the same values, and um, just um, being able to understand each other, understanding each other's needs, and... Um, you know, respecting one another. Like, it's almost like you respect each other where you don't air out your dirty laundry in public. 
you respect each other, where you can, you know, pull each other aside when the other or keep each other in check when one person acts out of character or one person is like over the line. Um, this is what I'm feeling here. It's she's got a heart on her hands. She's like giving out her her love and affection. And this person is lacking in love and affection and they're going out to find it. So I feel in a way this is a, a very, very good match, okay? They they come from different worlds. They live in different environments. And I feel like somebody's really holding out this this love. And it's something that you're lacking and you're drawn to it. You might have inadvertently given this person your heart. Um, I feel a very strong... I feel a, a very strong sense of you like um, taking a few steps forward and then retreating. So there is a sense of a lack of certainty within yourself. And I, I feel like, you know, you would never show anybody this part of yourself because you aim to be very purposeful with the things that you do. And once you set your intention on something, you proceed. You might not, you know, proceed full speed ahead, but it's almost like, you know, slow and steady win the race. So you have your own way of getting things done. And you're very determined once you make up your mind. But there is a situation here where you have been kind of oscillating back and forth, taking a few steps forward, and then there would be um, a little bit of a minor dip in confidence, and then it, you, you would regress. And... When you keep doing that, I, I almost feel like it can be very uh, um, it can be very frustrating from your end, and you're you you might not trust it. Okay, you're just like, why am I going back and forth about this for uh, for so long? Why am I not able to finalize a decision? Why am I not able to feel like certain with what I'm about to do? So there is a sense of apprehension. It's like the butterflies in your stomach, the lack of uncertainty, not being able to see what's going to happen as a result of it. You feel very apprehensive about moving forward full speed ahead. So there were signs and signals all along the way that, you know, whatever the outcome is, you're not supposed to know. And so you have to really rely on your inner knowing and your intuition to kind of guide you and sort of just trust that it will guide you to that missing piece of the puzzle. It will guide you towards what your heart has always been longing but lacking. It's almost like knowing something is missing but not knowing what it is. So you could be, for example, in a relationship you like the other person, you care about the other person, but you either can't fall in love with them or the love is already gone and you're trying to find a way to bring it back or you're trying to figure out why can't I fall in love with this person? They're a perfectly nice person. Why can't I fall in love? And whereas there's somebody else, you know, where communication hasn't been that great, where, you know, the two of you are just very different creatures. Like you're, you hail from different worlds. And you're just like, why do I like this person? Why am I so drawn to this person? Why do I see them everywhere I go? Why are all the signs pointing towards this person? And so... I feel as if you're asking these spiritual questions and you're looking for you're looking for even like a scientific uh, explanation to all of these spiritual questions which doesn't really, you know, work in tandem, right? It's almost like using the lens of social science to explain mathematics. It it doesn't work. And it's almost like, you know, using using mathematics and, and the statistics and probability to explain to explain emotions. Like it, it doesn't work. These things are not in congruence with one another, and so they can't be used to explain one another. So that's what I'm feeling. It's it's almost like 
trying to make sense of a situation using the long, wrong approach or using the wrong lens, looking at a situation through a wrong lens. And so let your heart guide you to make this decision and to take the steps. And I feel like a lot of the times um, some people work really well under pressure because when the clock is ticking, their intuition kicks in and the adrenaline kicks in and they're able to see all the minor details that they might have overlooked before. So I feel like maybe you needed that kind of like that, that, that rocket to be lit, that fire under you, or you need that time crunch for you to um, kind of strip away the facade, strip away the complications and just deal with a situation in its core fundamental basis. Okay. So like no more pretenses, no more, um, putting on a, a face, putting on a veneer, putting on airs. So we're going to be real about this and we're going to look at this and we're going to just listen to our heart. What does it want? Our heart is going to tell you, you know, is it a yes or a no? So that's what I feel like needs to happen. And this is what is happening for you for this week. Um, I definitely feel that there is a person who puts on a very, very happy face, but deep down, they're very, very alone. They feel very either misunderstood or they feel they're dealing with some type of doubt. Am I making the right decision? Am I going on the right path? Am I waiting for the right things? Am I headed in the right direction? So they themselves are dealing with a lot of self-doubt. Um, I see a lot of communication between you and this person. And once again, I keep seeing the hair, something about the, um, it's probably the crown chakra. The crown chakra deals with spirituality. So there's something here coming out from the head. Okay. So somebody might have like, um, might be very, very spiritual. Um, somebody might be very, very psychic, might have a lot of self-awareness and even insights and have given you a lot of insights. So I see things sprouting out from the, the crown of the head. Um, they're giving you a lot of, um, choices is what I'm sensing. So whatever conversations you've had with them, they have given you ample choices, ample opportunities, ample choices. And I feel like a big part of it is they want to leave the ball in your court. They want you to make the decision. And when you have a lot of choices, you can't say, oh, none of these choices, you know, work for me. So I'm going to say no. No, they're, they're giving you a lot of these choices because they want you to say yes because they want you to think over all of these options and they're being very, very flexible to accommodate you. So you have a lot of love coming through for you for this, um, this week. And I feel like you just need to, you know, turn off that, that voice in your head. You, you just need to turn it off and just close your eyes and really look at, you know, what does my heart want? What should my, what, what, what do I need to do? to appease my heart. I'm going to leave it at that, Taurus. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys.